Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty, we're gonna talk about emission systems. And we're coming at this whether you're a rookie and you don't have a clue, or you're an old timer and you just kinda wanna know the difference between a DPF and an SCR and a DOC and why we need DEF and what is, what is all these shenanigans? We're gonna get into it. But first we need to understand some basic concepts of how a diesel engine works. So what happens is you have a cylinder and inside that cylinder is a piston that moves up and down. The way that works is we inject diesel fluid into that piston as it's pulling down. And that not only draws the fuel into the chamber, but it also pulls in nice, fresh, clean air. And then what we do is we start to compress that. And when it finally gets to the top and it gets really, really hot, really, really compressed, the diesel fuel ignites, it forces the piston down. That's our power stroke. That's where an engine gets its power. And then we open the valves up. We push that, that piston back to the top and out go all of the soot and gases and heat that we just generated from the explosion. That's a very, very simple way that a diesel engine works. Now, it used to be back in the day, we could dump all of the soot and all of the gases out of our exhaust that we wanted. We actually relished it in the industry. I still remember the days where you would fire up a giant 345 excavator and watch a gentle soot cloud waft through the early morning sunrise. It was glorious. But what happened was the EPA came in and said, hey guys, you're, you're creating a lot of issues with the pollution you're putting out. We need to address some things. We need to address, and there's two primary things we need to address. The soot, the black clouds that you see, which is primarily comprised of unburnt fuel, believe it or not. That is, that is wasted diesel fuel. Interesting fact. But the other component that we are worried about is nitrous oxides, which is something you can't see, but it goes into the atmosphere, and that's actually one of the primary ingredients in smog. And so the EPA said, hey, you need to control these two things. We're going to give you, I don't know, a decade, maybe two to kind of get this under control because this is going to be a huge undertaking. But by this year, you have to have your diesel particulate down to a certain level and you have to have your nitrous oxide emissions down to a certain level. And so the industry went, holy crap, we got to get our stuff together and figure out how we're going to do this. So that is where we started coming up with emission systems. One of the first things introduced was an EGR, which stands for exhaust, exhaust, exhaust gas return. And essentially, if you can imagine this, we have the stream of exhaust going out, and then we have separate from that, a stream of clean, good air coming into the engine. Well, one of the primary reasons that nitrous oxides get created is because there's excess oxygen in the combustion process. And so what manufacturers did is said, hey, if we route some of that exhaust gas back into the intake and run it through the engine again, we're restricting some of the oxygen available and we can kind of take care of those nitrous oxide emissions. And so that is where the EGR came from. And it is simply put a very simple circuit where we take exhaust gas, route it back into the engine and reburn it so that we restrict oxygen. And that helped. But unfortunately, the government was like, no, 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 that was just tier one, guys. <laughs> we got more coming. We got four tiers total, technically five, because there was tier four interim and tier four final. And by tier four final, you got to get this stuff way down. So engine manufacturers yet again went back to the drawing board and said, my God, son, what are we going to do? And that is where we started getting into DPFs and SCRs and DOCs. What is all of that? Let's start with the DPF. A DPF is one of the most common industry terms you're going to hear when it comes to talking about emission systems, and it stands for diesel particulate filter. And it is exactly that. I've got a silly little example here. These are some filters from our home vacuum. And if you can imagine, we've got multiple layers within our DPF. And imagine this is in a housing so that it's actually contained. The diesel ex exhaust comes into one side of the filter and it runs through this tiny, you know, and you can see these are very, very tiny holes in our filter. Let me see if I can get it to focus. You can't even see through that hardly. And that's exactly how a DPF works. It's tiny, tiny holes. And it physically filters out those soot particles that are left over from combustion. And so what comes out on this side is all of the exhaust gases, obviously, but we've lost all of the soot. And so now what we've done, if you're looking at the outside of the machine, is you don't get the big poofy exhaust cloud anymore, which hurts everyone's heart in the industry. But the EPA, we've done our job. We feel good about the impact we've made to the environment. Well, the problem, as you can imagine, is what happens if we run this DPF for thousands of hours, not even thousands of hours, even 40 hours in a machine with all of that soot coming in here? 
what's going to happen? It's going to get clogged up, right? We have to figure out a way that we're going to deal with all of the soot that we're capturing because it doesn't just magically go away. So that's where the DPF has a mechanism for dealing with that, that we in the industry, and you've probably heard this term, we use a regen cycle, a regeneration. Well, what is actually happening? If you think about it, every machine that has a DPF, and you may not know whether or not it has a DPF, but if a machine uses the term regeneration and it tells you that it needs to have full engine power during the regeneration cycle, you have a DPF. Why does it need full power? What the engine, what the computer on the machine is actually doing is it is measuring the pressure from the clean side, I'm sorry, the dirty side to the clean side of your DPF. And when that pressure differential gets to a certain extent, the computer goes, whoa, 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 we got to clean this baby out. It's, it's causing us too much issue. We got to clean her out. And so we actually have diesel injectors in another compartment, believe it or not, that is kind of sitting right tucked up against our DPF. And that's called the DOC, diesel oxidation catalyst. That's not important. You don't need to worry about that term, but essentially what that is, it is a chamber, a separate chamber that comes before our DPF and they inject diesel fuel into that. And they actually mess with the engine's timing so that it reaches temperatures of over a thousand degrees inside the exhaust. This is a flaming giant ball of fire happening within this DOC. And it, and it ex accelerates those temperatures. It raises those temperatures as they flow into the DPF. And so now, if you remember, what was that diesel soot? Unburned fuel. Now we've reached a temperature to where that diesel soot is actually going to cook off. We can reignite it, we can cook it off, and you're still getting clean air coming out here. It's got all of the, obviously it's got all of the emissions in it, but you're not getting soot because we're, we're cooking the soot off. And after we've done a regeneration cycle, we have cleaned this filter off with the exception of the little bit of stuff left over that we call ash. If you're familiar with DPFs at all, remember DPF is diesel particulate filter. If you're familiar with DPFs at all, you know that around the 10,000 hour mark, maybe a little before, maybe a little after, depending on the machines and the technology and how far along it is, you have to remove this filter. You have to spend a bunch of money to send it off to a company and get that sucker washed out. Well, if we're cooking off all the soot, why do we need to wash it out? Why is there any maintenance whatsoever? It's because of the ash. The ash is unfortunately something that is left over from this whole process that for a while you can get away with it and it will still work just fine. But eventually that ash will start to clog up the filter and it doesn't burn off. And that is why DPFs require more maintenance. It requires a cleaning after so many hours because that ash clogs it up. You have to, and essentially what they do, there's no science or, or magic to it. Essentially what they do is they have specialized machines that are giant pressure washers and they physically pump cleaning chemicals and water through this DPF and blow the ash out of it and actually get it out of the filter. And there you go. You've got a nice, shiny, clean DPF that's ready for another, you know, 10,000 hours or so. That's DPFs. Now let's talk about some of the problems with the DPF. One is, like we just discussed, it requires ongoing maintenance. You, you know that you're going to have to take the sucker off of your machine and you're going to have to get it cleaned at some point. So that's a bummer. Another issue with DPFs is the fact that we're dealing with such high temperatures. When you start to deal with those sort of temperatures, well over a thousand degrees, you have sensors that are exposed to those. You have fuel injectors that are exposed to those things are going to break. Things are going to have issues and errors and problems because those are extremely high temperatures for anything to be working in. And now you have moving parts. If you think about your injectors, you have very sensitive uh, pressure monitors on these things. And so over time, these parts tend to fail. And so DPFs, in my experience in the industry and most people that I'm familiar with, DPFs tend to be a little more problematic than its counterpart. The counterpart that I'm talking about is the SCR, the Selective Catalyst Reduction. This is separate than a DPF. Sometimes they are used together. So you have some machines, depending on the engine manufacturer, that will require a DPF to take care of diesel particulate and an SCR to take care of our NOx emissions because that's what SCRs take care of. Now, what a lot of engine manufacturers have done is they've said, hey, you know what? We recognize these DPFs. They're kind of a pain in the ass because they're constantly causing problems. 
if we can burn our fuel cleaner and we can get a more accurate burn, well, then we've kind of taken care of that diesel particulate side. We don't have to worry about it, which means no more DPF. We can eliminate that. But because we're getting such a clean burn, we're going to get a little more on the nitrous oxides. And so we've got to somehow deal with the nitrous oxide situation. And so what they've done is they've come up with an SCR, the Selective Catalyst Reducer, Reducer, Reduction. I don't know. Look it up. It, I, I'm probably botching the term. But anyway, essentially what that is, is instead of having this really complicated, super, you know, fancy filter, what we've essentially done is we've filled it with something that isn't, and I don't have a, a good sponge to show you, but imagine we took this and we put a bunch of bigger holes holes in it because what this is really is a matrix of a catalyst. What do I mean by matrix? Um, it, it's just a block of a catalyst and a catalyst is something that we can run our exhaust gases over along with a secret ingredient and it will chemically change the gases that are going in one side and they come out something separate on the other side. What are we talking about? Nitrous oxides. If we are burning our diesel really, really clean, that means we've got a lot of oxygen in the, in the uh, combustion chamber, so we're getting complete combustion, so we don't have diesel particulate for the most part. But because of all that oxygen, now we're getting more nitrous oxides, and so we're not meeting that criteria that the EPA set for us on nitrous oxides. So to do that, we're going to run this gas through this. And, and again, it's not a filter. This is going to be a lot, a lot bigger holes. We're not getting clogged up with an SCR, but we're going to run that gas through this catalyst and we're going to spray DEF. There's DEF. What is DEF? Diesel exhaust fluid. That's the fancy industry term for it. If we spray DEF on this, as the air is passing through it, it's going to change the nitrous oxides into just regular nitrogen. Well, we can get away with just putting regular nitrogen out of the exhaust. A regular nitrogen is in the air all around us. It's one of the prime, in fact, it's the most prevalent gas in the air around us. The, the EPA doesn't care if we put nitrogen in the atmosphere. And so that's the whole goal of this SCR is to change nitrous oxides, which are bad and they cause smog, into regular nitrogen. Who cares? So that is how an SCR works. Now, we still need warm temperatures, which is why with all exhaust systems, you're going to want to run the machine full throttle. So if you, you know, gone are the days of running your skid steer around at the minimum throttle or right above idle so that you can sip on fuel. You don't need to worry about that because when we started introducing all this stuff, the, the manufacturers went to computerized, um, you know, engine monitoring systems, high pressure common fuel rails. They've done a lot of stuff to make the engines very, very, very efficient. And they only burn the amount of fuel you need for the load on the machine. But we have to have heat for your DPF to work, obviously, because we're cooking things. But even with the SCR, the only way this catalyst works is if it's got a certain amount of heat in the system to create the chemical reaction that needs to take place. And so what that means is, we need to run our machines at pretty much full throttle most of the time. It's fine to idle down to chat and everything, but you're going to notice you don't ever idle machines on the job site now. If you're not going to use it for more than a couple minutes, shut the machine off. Well, why is that? Because you're not getting heat, which means you're getting a lot more soot, which means you're clogging up your DPF or your SCRR is also not able to do its job. And because we're generating a lot more soot and this thing isn't made to cook off soot, the SCR is only made to do that, that, chemical reaction, we're going to start clogging up our SCR and we don't have any way to unclog it. And so that is why it's so important to run your machines at a high temperature and not let them sit and idle on the job site. So DEF, what is DEF? DEF is just urea, which is kind of ammonia pretty much, and water. Sounds complicated. It's really not. But at the same time, you have to know how to handle DEF fluid or else you're going to have problems with your SCR system. Overall, SCR systems are less problematic than DPFs because you're not dealing with the extreme temperatures and the extreme heat. Now, where a lot of people in the industry run into problems with the SCR and with DEF is actually from improper DEF handling. DEF, if you've seen it at the, at the grocery store or at the convenience store, it usually comes in those two and a half gallon totes. And generally what people will do is they'll buy two or three at a time. They throw them in the bed of their truck and then they let them sit there until they need them in a week or two. Well, the problem with that is that urea, the actual chemicals that are suspended in water, 
start to come out of solution. They start to crystallize. You can't get them to go back into solution. They will not reabsorb into the water once they've crystallized. Well, guess what happens if you have a whole bunch of crystals that have set up in your, in your deaf tote that you have? Here two weeks go by, you finally reach for that last tote of def that you have in the bed of your truck, you just go dump it right into your def tank, and now you have a system to where it's trying to inject, which by the way, I didn't mention this, in the SCR container there is an injector that is injecting this def. I know I kind of talked about it conceptually, but there is an injector that is injecting def into the SCR. Well, what happens when one of those little crystals comes down the pipe and gets stuck in your little, in your little injector? Well, now your injector doesn't work and you're not able to actually spray the catalyst and now all of a sudden nothing's working correctly or your sensors get messed up. That's why we have problems with DEF systems is because too many people don't understand the importance of proper DEF handling. And the second you start getting crystals in your DEF system, you start wreaking all sorts of havoc. There is a small filter on the DEF pickup within the DEF tank. Well, what happens over time if you continue to mishandle DEF is that gets clogged up with all the crystals and now your DEF pump is not able to suck DEF and actually send it to the SCR. And again, we're back in the situation to where our SCR isn't getting what it needs to do its job. That means an error code for you in the cab, a lot of angry frustration, and a lot of talk about how SCRs and DEF are the devil. It really just comes down to proper DEF handling. So how do you handle DEF properly? First of all, only buy what you're going to use now. There are ways to deal with DEF in bulk, but you have to prepare for that and you have to think about it and you have to be diligent about it. You can buy the large containers of DEF, but if you're going to reuse any DEF containers, it needs to be a dedicated container. You cannot mix it with any other fluids. If you have any fuel, any oil, any coolant, anything else that is mixing with the DEF, you're setting yourself up for failure because you're messing with chemical reaction within the catalyst. Uh, you could potentially clog up your system. You need to use a dedicated DEF container. The second thing we need to worry about is, let's say we have our dedicated container that we fill out of our 55 gallon barrel of DEF. You need to be very diligent that you use all of the DEF in that container within a few days. Don't let it sit out in the heat. Don't let it sit in the bed of your truck. Don't let it sit in the trunk of your car for a couple weeks. You're going to get crystallization. You're going to have problems. The day or the day before, you know you're going to need DEF on the job. That's when you take your dedicated container. You take it to your 55-gallon drum. And before you do anything, you are going to wipe the spigot on your drum down very well and get all of the crystals off of it. You're going to make sure that sucker is clean as a whistle. And then on your DEF container that you're reusing, after every use... You need to make sure you rinse it out and you wipe off the neck and the mouth of it along with the cap so that you don't get crystals building up on those areas once you've emptied the container. Because now if you've got just a tiny bit of def in there because you've pretty much drained the container, well, guess what? The water is going to evaporate like that and you got crystals everywhere. So the first thing we need to do after we empty it, we need to do a quick rinse out. And it doesn't have to be super heavy involved, but just do a quick rinse out of your container. And then you just need to wipe the neck down or something with a rag, with your glove, with your pant leg. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want, wipe it down so you don't get crystal buildup. That way, when we go back to our 55-gallon drum, we've wiped down the spigot. We know our container's clean. We can fill it up. And then you have about two days that you need to use that def within. And I say two days conservatively. You could probably get away with more. But I'm trying to make your life as problem-free as possible right now. Try to use it in a couple days. And then you can go and use that in your machine, and you're all good to go. If you're not using bulk DEF, it's really easy. Don't buy DEF until you absolutely need DEF. So if you know you're going out to the job tomorrow and your skid steer is at a quarter of a tank and it's DEF tank, grab you a two and a half gallon tote knowing that you're going to use it that day or the next. And don't let it sit in the bed of your truck. And now you're setting yourself up for a problem-free experience with your SCR. So I hope this has been helpful. I know this is a lot to take in and it sounds like it, but really once you get a little experience with these systems, it's not so scary, it's not so bad. Uh, the biggest thing is educating yourself so you know what you're dealing with so that you can understand what a regeneration cycle is. You know, when it comes to the SCR, understanding how to handle DEF so that you don't have problems. That's really going to be a game changer for you and your business uh, if you don't have this education already. So as always, I hope this has been helpful and helped you out. We'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.